Okay, I, good morning everybody. Ken, Ken tells me the church bell has already rung, so. Uh, welcome to everybody this morning. Welcome to everybody on the live feed and if you're on Facebook. Nice to have you with us this morning. I'm going to kind of do announcements a little bit backward this morning a little bit. Uh, first of all, I want to thank everybody that showed up yesterday for the church grounds cleaning and the cemetery work and all the bush trimming and all that stuff. Thank you. It looks great. Uh, next Sunday, I want to talk about first, next Sunday is Mission Festival. So that will begin at 10 o'clock with a service with Pastor Jonathan Unversacht. Did I pronounce that name right? Unversacht. Okay. Uh, he, will be spe- he will be our guest speaker uh, at 10 o'clock. Lunch is at 11.30. In the afternoon, uh, program starts at 1. And, of course, the offering is split 50-50 between home missions and world missions. So that's for next Sunday. Uh, Tracy wanted me to announce anybody that's on the sound thing with with Tracy to meet back there after church this morning. Uh, And then I wanted to talk a little bit about this afternoon, the cemetery walk. Of course, it's sponsored by the Iroquois County Genealogical Society. And I wanted to kind of give you a list of some of the families or whatever that's going to be on it. Mary's going to start out and she's going to kind of do a history of kind of the area and Queen City and Schwer and kind of some of the surrounding, I guess, people who were in the area at the time when the church started. Uh, Harm Schamberg is going to, there's a guy that's going to do a thing on Harm Schamberg, the Geiken family, Dean Geiken is going to do something on that. Shanda Jeremus, I don't know who she is, she's going to do a thing on the Rothfuss family. Quentin, I guess you're going to do a thing on Frank and Hiram Schomburg, okay? The Jensen and Ferricks, D. Eckersley is going to do something on that. Uh, ben Storm is going to do something on Herman Smith. Uh, Larry Schutte is going to be doing something with the Fisher kids that's, that's buried clear out on the west edge of the cemetery. And Daniel Flora, I don't know him, but he's going to do a Luby Sadoff. So anyway, that's, that's some of the names that's going to be on the cemetery walk this afternoon. So uh, that's about all I've got, I think. So with that in mind, got to have a joke about a cemetery. Immediately, immediately following the graveside service, there was a huge burst of thunder followed by a lightning bolt and more thunder. The widowed husband looked at the pastor and matter of factly said, well, she's there. <laughs> I won't go into where, she, where that there is, but. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you for being here today. I'm excited to worship with you. I do have a few announcements. We will have junior youth group and fly today at 2 p.m. I have the service at Prairie View at 2, so Quincy will be here to lead a game until I get back to do the study. Um, we also had received a let everybody know hello from Dennis Eilers. Is that right? Yeah, okay. So Matt ran into him this last week, and he wanted everybody to be, uh, uh, what do you call that, greeted at, at the congregation here. And lastly, uh, we're adding Rusty Wagner to our prayer list. Uh, he was diagnosed recently with colon cancer, and he has surgery on Wednesday. So uh, he is here. We're being praying for you, Rusty. And uh, if you guys want to send your well wishes and encourage him, that would be wonderful. So uh, especially on Wednesday, that would be something that we remember. Are there any other announcements that need to be made that I have not made this morning? We begin the service then in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Our call to worship comes from Psalm 116. It's actually the entirety of the psalm. Starting then with verse 1. I love the Lord because he has heard my voice and my pleas for mercy. Because he inclined his ear to me, therefore I will call on him as long as I live. The snares of death encompassed me. The pangs of Sheol laid hold of me. I suffered distress and anguish. Then I called on the name of the Lord. O Lord, I pray, deliver my soul. Gracious is the Lord and righteous. Our God is merciful. 
The Lord preserves the simple. When I was brought low, he saved me. Return, O my soul, to your rest, for the Lord has de dealt bountifully with you. For you have delivered my soul from death, my eyes from tears, my feet from stumbling. I will walk before the Lord in the land of the living. Would you join me as we open in prayer? Jesus, we are thankful. We are thankful that you are our rescuer. We're thankful that even at the slightest thought, you're attentive. When prayers struggle to come from our mouth, you already know our distress and our weakness. When we are cast down, oh Lord, you know our soul and you long to lift us up. Jesus, we praise you this morning. We worship you. And as we do so, oh Lord God, we pray that you would be present. We ask that you would be glorified and lifted on high. Lord, would you hear us and recognize our love for you this morning? In your precious name, amen. Would you please rise and sing together our opening hymn, hymn number 184, Immortal, Invisible, God Only Wise. <clears throat> Let us bow before the Lord and confess our sins. Almighty God, our Maker and Redeemer, we poor sinners confess to you that we are by nature sinful and unclean, and that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. Therefore, we flee for refuge to your infinite mercy and ask you for Christ's sake. Grant us forgiveness of all our sins, and by your Holy Spirit, increase in us true knowledge of you and of your will and true obedience to your word, to the end that by your grace we may come to eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.
receive absolution and the declaration of grace this morning. If this be your sincere confession, and if with penitent hearts you earnestly desire the forgiveness of your sins for the sake of Jesus Christ, God, according to his promise, forgives you all your sins. And by the authority of God's word and by the command of our Lord Jesus Christ, I can declare to you that God, through his grace, has forgiven you all your sins. In the name of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. We'll call on the scripture reader at this time. Good morning. The Old Testament lesson is from Isaiah 50, 4 through 10. The Lord God has given me the tongue of those who are taught, that I may know how to sustain with the word him who is weary. Morning by morning he awakens. He awakens my ear to hear as those who are taught. The Lord God has opened my ear, and I was not rebellious. I turned not backward. I gave my back to those who strike, and my cheeks to those who pull out the beard. I hid not my face from disgrace and spitting, but the Lord God helps me. Therefore, I have not been disgraced. Therefore, I have set my face like a flint, and I know that I shall not be put to shame. He who vindicates me is near. Who will contend with me? Let us stand up together. Who is my adversary? Let him come near to me. Behold, the Lord God helps me. Who will declare me guilty? Behold, all of them who wear out like a garment. The moth will eat them up. Who among you fears the Lord and obeys the voice of his servant? Let him who walks in darkness and has no light trust in the name of the Lord and rely on his grace. The New Testament lesson comes from James 3, 1 through 12. Not many of you know of you should become teachers, my brothers, for you know that we who teach will be judged with greater strictness. For we all stumble in many ways, and if anyone does not stumble in what he says, he is a perfect man able also to brittle his whole body. If we put bits into the mouths of horses so that they obey us, we guide their whole bodies as well. Look at the ships also. Though they are so large and are driven by strong winds, they are guided by a very small rudder, wherever the will of the pilot directs. So also the tongue is a small number, member, yet it boasts of great things. How great a forest it set ablaze by such a small fire. And the tongue is a fire, a world of unrighteousness. The tongue is set among our members, staining the whole body, setting on fire the entire course of life, and set on fire by hell. For every kind of beast and bird, of reptile and sea creature, can be tamed and has been tamed by mankind. But no human being can tame the tongue. It is a restless evil, full of deadly poison, With it, well, bless our Lord and Father, and with it, we curse people who are made in the likeness of God. From the same mouth, a spring pour forth from the same opening, both fresh and salt water. Can a fig tree, my brothers, bear olives, or a grapevine produce figs? Neither can a salt pond yield fresh water. Would you please rise for the gospel text? The gospel text today comes from Mark chapter 9, verses 14 through 29, reading in Jesus' name. And when they came to the disciples, they saw a great crowd around them and scribes arguing with them. And immediately all the crowd, when they saw him, were greatly amazed and ran up to him and greeted him. And he had asked them, what are you arguing about with them? And some from the crowd answered him, Teacher, I brought my son to you, for he has a spirit that makes him mute. And whenever it seizes him, it throws him down, and he foams and grinds his teeth and becomes rigid. So I asked your disciples to cast it out, and they were not able. And he answered them, O faithless generation, how long am I to be with you? How long am I to bear with you? Bring him to me. And they brought the boy to him. And when the spirit saw him, immediately it convulsed the boy, and he fell on the ground and rolled about, foaming at the mouth. And Jesus asked the father, How long has this been happening to him? And he said, From childhood. And it has often cast him into the fire and into water 
to destroy him. But if you can do anything, have compassion on us and help us. And Jesus said to him, if you can, all things are possible for one who believes. Immediately, the father of the child cried out and said, I believe, help my unbelief. And when Jesus saw that the crowd came running together, he rebuked the unclean spirit, saying to it, You mute and deaf spirit, I command you, come out of him and never enter him again. And after crying out and convulsing him terribly, it came out, and the boy was like a corpse. So the most of them said, He is dead. But Jesus took him by the hand, lifted him up, and he arose. And when he had entered the house, his disciples asked him privately, Why could we not cast it out? And he said to them, this kind cannot be driven out by anything but prayer. Here ends the reading of God's word. Brendan, as we get ready to confess our faith, I was wondering... As a confirmation student, could you tell me why is it important that we confess our faith? Good job. I prepped him for that. He was really, really nervous. As we were studying this last week, we came across verses of assurance of salvation. And the one from Romans chapter 10 verse 9 says, if we confess with our mouth. So this morning, we will worship the Lord by confessing our faith and what we believe in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. And in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated on the right hand of God the Father Almighty, from where he shall come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. We'll call on the children at this time for the children's message. So, Brandon, now you can tell, you can tell Ariel it's not so bad, right? I, I told Ariel I'm preparing her. She gets one month to prepare before she has to do candles. And she covered her face and said, can I die now? <laughs> All right. So, do we have the bag? I'm looking at you. No bag today. So we're coming to the wonderful. What do you got in here? Have you did you hide something in here preparing for me? Oh, that's nice. Have you done this one before? I think maybe we did. God came through the church floor. Yeah. Do you have something else? Because I know I think I've taught on this one already. Do you have something really, really hard, like some lint or something? Oh, perfect. That'll work. All right. Who knows how long this has been in there? (laughs) What is this? It's candy? No. No. This is a piece of uh, Hall's cough drop from 1985. (laughs) And so, (laughs) 
Uh, thanks for being such a good sport, by the way, Diane. <laughs> so what do we use a cough drop for? Aiden, Aiden Frick sa said when we're hacking like a dog, I'm not sure what a dog hacks like, but when we're hacking like a dog and we want something to help us with our coughing. All right, why do we cough? In most circumstances, Okay, let, because we're sick, there's a problem, and so we begin to cough. And the cough is a what? It's a symptom of a problem. So this candy or cough drop, does it fix the problem or does it try to soothe the symptom? Does it soothe the symptom or does it heal the sickness? This we often do in our life. We try and soothe the symptom. So when we're struggling and we've had a bad day, have you guys ever had a bad day? <laughs> I know you've had tons of them, haven't you, Alana? Such bad days. When you have a bad day, what do you want to do to help it? Every day with school is a bad day. Is your mom still your teacher? Oh, okay, just checking. That would have been, if you'd have said that last year, that would have been our. So, when we have a bad day, what are some of the things that you want to do? Isaiah? Okay, so what are they? Baseball. Okay, so go outside, play some baseball. Get what you want. That's a broad term. I want a million dollars. When I'm feeling like I'm having a bad day, I'd like a millionaire to give me a million dollars. That's not going to happen. So instead, I eat a cookie. Right? Or throw a fit. Yeah, sometimes we throw fits. Sometimes we like to try to be alone, maybe. Right? Did that actually solve the problem? It helps us. It soothes us. But it doesn't solve the problem. Our problem as sinners is that we cannot save ourselves. Our bad days can be a product of things we can't control. They can weigh on us and they can drag us down, other people, how they treat us, all kinds of things. But there's another thing that we can't control that needs to be fixed. And it's not enough just to be soothed. And that's the fact that we can't save ourselves. I want you to fill in the blank for me. It is, Im it is impossible to please God without blank. You're supposed to raise your hand. Oh, thanks for raising your hand, Brecken. Aiden Allen. Faith. Faith. <laughs> that was fun for me. So, yeah, who's laughing now? Okay, so we have to have faith in order to please God. And so as we believe and we trust... We are having faith in God. This fix is what we need. It's faith and trust in God. So, whether you're from 1985 or from 2003, which one was you born in 2003? That was Kaya, huh? She's not here. Good of me to pick the wrong. Who? CJ? Where is he? Hey, CJ, or if you were born in 2003, we still need to have faith in Christ because that's the real answer to the real problem while all the other things can be just things that happen in our life that uh, aren't necessarily a product of anything other than just being alive. And so we constantly need to turn to Christ. So... The next time you see a Hall's cough drop, 
from Diane's purse. <laughs> Remember, you need to have faith. All right. Hands out. Oh, <laughs> blessed. Blessed I am. Thank you. <laughs> Hands out. Hands together. Dear Heavenly Lord, thank you for faith. Thank you that faith is not something that we have to create within ourselves, Lord Jesus, but thank you that it is given to us by you. Lord God, shower us in your word. Bring upon us belief and faith, Lord Jesus, and help us to continue to trust you and stay close to you. In your holy and precious name, amen. All right. Got a name? Yeah, I know Anna had it, but we'll pick somebody here. And then if I have to do two, I'll do two. Aiden Allen. Okay, yeah. Yeah, don't bring the last one you brought, okay? All right. All right, sounds good. You guys can go sit down. Hey, you two. Fun fact, those of you who are old retro gamers, I'm, I'm feeling like we got a lot in here, but uh, that song is actually the background music for a game called The Dragon, I think it's Dragon Lord, 
I may be wrong, but it's kind of like one of the first uh, RPG games of the, the first Nintendo that came out. And you would go into the castle, and that would be the background music that would play. And uh, I didn't know that until I, I had saw that the game came out on an app or something at one time a few years back. And I was like, oh, that's cool retro game. I remember that game. And I tried getting on it, and I was like, wait, that's a hymn in the background. But when you're a little kid and you didn't get raised in the church, you don't recognize that. That's kind of interesting how that works out, right? Today's text comes from Mark chapter 9, verses 14 through 29. The heading for this section of Scripture, at least in this New American Standard Bible, says that all things are possible. And I don't know if that's the main thrust of this section of Scripture, though it's definitely at the center. There are things that I want us to recognize as we read through about what's taking place and what's happening so before we begin, would you join me as we pray? Dear Jesus, we are helpless without you. Lord, we can't begin to understand Scripture. We can't begin to understand who you are, the nature of what you are, how you work, the grandeur of your being. Lord Jesus, we can't even understand the simplicity of your love for us if you first don't work in us. So send your spirit to be among us now, to work in our hearts, each and every one. May it be that as you speak this word, Lord Jesus, and may it be that you speak, that your spirit gives us ears to hear, that it applies it to us today. And we long, O oh Lord, to know your love better for us, that our hearts and that our souls would be strengthened and lifted by the glorious grace that you have given. In your holy and precious name, amen. Jesus was not this crowd, and as he comes up to the crowd, he realizes that they are arguing or discussing something. And so he wonders what's happening. And he says to them, what are you discussing with them? And one of the crowd people answer and say, teacher, I brought you my son, possessed with the spirit which makes him him mute. And whenever it seizes him, it slams him to the ground and he foams at the mouth and grinds his teeth and stiffens out. I told your disciples to cast it out and they could not do it. When he had answered them and said, O oh, unbelieving generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I put up with you? Bring him to me. I think that if Jesus were standing here today, this would be what he says to us. If he were to watch the news, if he were to stand in the town square, if he would listen to the tomfoolery, I don't even know how that word came to be, but I feel bad for tomfoolery because his name is not associated with good things. I think Jesus would look and say, Oh, unbelieving generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I put up with you? When Jesus speaks this, do you ever wonder who he's talking to? Who was he looking at? Sometimes when we have people over at our house and when the kids are misbehaving, even if it's not my children, if they're just visiting and they're misbehaving, what I will do is I will specifically look and correct my child so that the other child can hear, but doesn't receive the death glare. I wonder, who was Jesus looking at? 
Was Jesus looking at the disciples? Was the intent of what he was saying to the fact that the disciples could not cast out the demon? Was he looking at the disciples saying, you unbelieving generation? Was he intending to be, where is your faith and why can't you do the task before you? Or was it to the people arguing with his disciples around them? My daughter called me last night. It was about 11.30, I think. And she had three girls in the background. They were on speakerphone. And they wanted to discuss baptism and theology. And that's kind of what Bible school does. You end up staying up late, talking about different things all the time. And, of course, my daughter said, let's just call my dad. And uh, as we were discussing it, one of the things that they had asked was, you know, if, if a baby, if an infant is going to fall away and they can lose their salvation after they've been baptized, then why not wait to baptize them? Till after that point, maybe that they would have fallen away. Yeah, you know what? I made that same face, Wayne, that exact same face, but nobody could see it. Because I was in my room by myself. I made the same face. <laughs> then she asked about the effectiveness of baptism. Today, as we look at this very verse or section of verses in Mark, we might want to ask the question, what makes the disciples effective at casting out a demon where does this power come from and who wields it and what authority by do they wield it who has given them the right to do so because in some countries if you were to sit down and talk with pastor Connolly Dyrud who was a missionary in Brazil for 30 plus years who had exorcisms that he performed who saw even infants that had been possessed that those things are real and that the people who practice witchcraft those uh, witch doctors they have power but it's not derived from the one Lord. It's derived from something else. And so if they run to demons to receive power in witchcraft, by what power then does the one who can cast out the demons seek to find the effectiveness of being able to do so What is the benefit of life or in life for believing? If I can wait until, I don't know, two seconds before I die and then I accept Christ... There I can live whatever life I want to live. Do whatever I want to do. Live, laugh, and love. You only live once. So let's live it up. And then at the very end, we'll sneak in the salvation right before I die. Isn't that more effective? When I think of God, and I think of all of these things, and I think of the word efficacy, being effective. That word is not subjective. In other words, I don't get to determine 
whether something is effective or not, right? Sometimes we do that in our life, like, uh, I don't know, I prefer gain compared to tide because it's more effective. Or I prefer Dawn dish soap compared to palm olive. Is that a... I can't remember if that's a... Yeah, okay, good, thank you. I've, it has been a while since I've done dishes, so... <laughs> but the effectiveness, the authority of God that grants authority unto us and the power which rests within us in our belief as Christ himself through the Holy Spirit lives in and through me, which makes me effective. These things are not subjective. I don't get to determine them, rate them. Do you... Belief. The boy brought him out when he saw him immediately. The spirit was thrown into the convulsions on the ground and he began to roll around foaming at the mouth. He asked the father, Jesus, how long has this been happening? And he said, from childhood. Does that matter, by the way? <laughs> Isn't it funny? Why is that in Scripture? Right? When you read this, how many of you get this idea, right? Jesus busts in. He's like, what are you arguing about? And then he's like, you guys, why are you still unbelieving? Bring me the kid. And then he sees the kid. And he's like, ooh, how long has that been happening? Like, that's what it, what it feels like when I read that. But that's not what... Last, last week, we see Jesus literally cast out a demon, and he didn't do say or anything. He didn't even see the kid. He was like, it's done. Go. So does it matter how long the demon had been there? As if like it had dug itself down deep in and that because it had been there longer, that for some reason that makes it harder for Jesus to cast out? So the father, he says, if you can do anything, take pity on us. If you can do anything. Do you think the man was being polite or he was uncertain? Was he being like, you know, if you're not busy and you don't mind... Could you help us out? Was that his attitude? Or was it, I don't know what you can do about this. If you can do anything, would you, can you please help us? Jesus' response was, if you can. Are you kidding me? Right? That's the, if you, if you remember the old Aladdin, right? And he questions Aladdin's ability or questions the genie ability. He's like, did you rub my lamp? Are you calling me here? And then he goes off and, well, Jesus, what is there that Jesus can't? What is there that Jesus can't? How many of you in your life, though, have felt like this is a pretty big problem, this is a pretty big issue, and I'm not sure, you know, God's, you know, I don't know, first of all, I mean, I don't know why God's got time for me. I'm just this one person. I'm not even famous. I'm not, I'm not really important, really. Why would God even hear what I got to say? I mean, there's got to be bigger things out there that he's got to be working on. Why would he even care to listen to me? Why, why do we do that to ourselves, right? Why do, we, why do we put something between us and God as if God can't for some reason? If God can. If you can. He said all things are possible to him who believes. Why? 
Why do you believe? Why? Do you believe because your family believed, your parents believed? It was the normal thing to do. It was what was done by everybody. Why do you, why do you come here on Sunday morning? What is it that draws you to God? Or is it that you have to force yourself to go to God? Why do you believe? Why sing the songs? Why look to the cross? Aidan Frerichs. What condemns unbelief? Unbelief. Well done. Yes, all things are possible. And when we would read this, we would find that and seem that the center of this passage has to do with the fact that all things are possible. But in the end, what Jesus is calling for is for belief. How deep does your belief go? I mean, I'm okay with saying that Jesus is my Savior and that by believing in him, I know that I can go to heaven. I'm going to pick on you, Ariel, because I love you. I'm okay to say Jesus is my Savior and He can save me. But then, if I got to walk up in front of people to light candles, that's another thing. That's something different altogether. Do you see how we do that? We do it all the time. It's not just you, I do the same thing. Mine tend to be about being a good father. And they come and haunt me at 2 a.m. in the morning. And I remember the things that I said that I shouldn't have said and how I've hurt my children. And I can say that Jesus is my Savior and that He loves me. But do I really believe and trust in Him in all the areas? In the fact that when I make mistakes, even as a parent, that God can fix even that. My daughter brought me a Barbie doll the other day. Actually, she brought me the arm. (laughs) Because she wanted me to fix the arm. And I don't know what happened. But she, she's a casualty of war. And that arm's not going back on. It was absolutely unfixable. And uh, as a parent of nine children, can you imagine what my response is? It's not, just go put it back in the toy box. Just play with it with a broken arm. Mine is, throw it in the trash, get rid of that. I can't be keeping broken stuff around. That's your story, by the way. Did you know that? That's your story. You literally started out life broken. Destined for the trash. Unusable. But Christ's love for you said you're not disposable. So in our belief, as we trust in him, let us recognize that there is nothing that God cannot do in our life. You're sitting here now in church believing. You're sitting here now in church believing. There is nothing he can't do. 
Not one thing. Today I ask, did your response be this today? I do believe. Help me in my unbelief. And let us watch what God can do. Jesus, I know you can do more than I could ever ask or think. My words are short, few, misunderstanding and unknowing. So I rest in your ability, your knowing, that even in my own heart, where my belief lies. And oh Lord, I feel it. I feel it, it's so little. Grant each and every one of us belief. Help us in our unbelief, O oh Lord. We rest and know, even in this unbelieving generation, there ain't no stopping you. In your holy and precious name, amen. As we come before the Lord in prayer today, I would like to know if there are any prayer requests among the congregation. So first, I'm putting Rusty down. Are there any others? Yes, Teresa. Um, is this, were you talking about people at the hospital and COVID? Is that what you're speaking towards? My uncle, Verlin. Verlin? Yeah. I had a hard time hearing you. I'm sorry. Yeah, so, so Verlin, Verlin uh, he did get back into the nursing home though, right? So he's on a good track. He was in the hospital uh, a couple days ago, so he's doing better. So, but let's keep him in prayer. And then also I know that there's been you know, an uptick of, of COVID cases and problems and everything in the area. Let us find it in our heart to just pray for those people who are struggling in that. Any others? Your client? Is that for your for the oil business or where he works? Okay, all right. Stage four? Yeah. All right. You said him? I'm not going to ask his name, but it's a him? Yeah. Okay. All right. Let's go before the Lord. Thank you for this place, Jesus. Thank you for these people. And, as I say that, Lord, I feel as if I've discluded myself among the number, but in reality, I am among this congregation. I'm a fellow member in the same needs, the same desires, O oh Lord. And there are many, Lord Jesus, who need your hand of healing from this congregation and from our community. Jesus, we pray that you would be with Rusty. We ask that you would Put your hand of healing upon him to make a full recovery, that his surgery would go well, and that there would be no complications. In the same way, we pray for Verlin as well, Lord God. Continue to grant him simple belief and faith, trust in you, and may it be that he feels you in, his, in your presence in his life continually, Lord. I pray, Lord Jesus, that you would help him to feel better from whatever is ailing him. And I pray, Lord God, that you would bring peace into his life. Lord, I pray that you would bring peace into everyone's life who is struggling that morning, Lord. Thank you for grief share and for the ministry that you helped begin and bring here in that. We pray, Lord Jesus, that you continue to bless those 
who are working through their grief in grief share. Thank you for new life, Jesus. Thank you for children. But also, Lord God, thank you for new believers. Thank you for new faith. Lord God, kindle revival. May it begin in my own heart. Desire and a hunger to thirst after you and your righteousness. Lord God, keep us near the cross. Lord God, be with the cemetery walk this afternoon and prepare each and every heart for the missions festival next week. Be with Pastor Unverzat as he's been preparing and planning on coming, coming. Keep him safe. May we find and continue to rest in your grace, Lord, this next week. We pray for this client that has stage four cancer. God, uh, you are an answer to many things. We know you can do all things. So we pray for your will to be done in the life of this person. And may that begin with a knowledge of the truth, salvation of the soul, and joy instilled in heart. Lord, we pray in the way that you've taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Please rise to receive the benediction. We conclude our service in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Now may the God of peace himself sanctify you entirely, and may your spirit and soul be preserved complete without blame at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now to the King eternal, immortal, invisible, the only God, be honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. Let us sing together, To God Be the Glory, number 509.